Well, I think the biggest legacy that I think is kind of cool about the Heights Theater is that it actually survives. I always called it the theater with no name because there really wasn't a name out front. When I first bought this theater, it was pretty run down and it was, it was pretty gross. So much of the original architectural detail in the theater had been covered up that I didn't think a lot of it was there. But I discovered that the blueprints for the building were the U of M Architectural Archives. And when I went there, I discovered all this architectural detail. And that then piqued my interest in thinking, well, is it still there? Is it just covered up? And that changed the direction then totally on it. And then it really became more to just restoring it to, you know, a 1926 theater. This theater's heyday was pretty much during the war and after the war with the big post-war uh, suburban boom and the big rise of the middle class. When this theater was built in 1926, it was basically a farm town. Past 40th, there was nothing but farms. And so this was kind of the end of the line. The streetcar actually ended on 40th. This theater was built truly for this community. It was considered, you know, ain't just a local neighborhood theater. When the theater was originally built in 1926, it did have an organ. And then when they did a big remodel here in 1936, they took the organ out because of course by that time there was sound, there was really no need for it. But the chambers and everything were still there. And that's one of the key things if you want to reinstall an organ in a theater, is you have to have the organ chambers and the, the actual infrastructure of the building to house it. And this building had that. All the organists are volunteer. They play Friday and Saturday night before the seven o'clock showing. This is what we call a chest magnet. And there's one of these for every sound in the organ. <laughs> Well, I do a lot of classic film series. Because of the size of the booth here, I was still able to keep my film projection equipment. So I have the digital, plus I still have my two Norelco AA2 3570 projectors. And I still do quite a bit of film here as far as classic and film events. I always called it the theater with no name because there really wasn't a name out front. But once that sign was up, it was really just cool to get in my car and drive all the way up Central both ways and drive down and see it. 